The IPCC reports, and we've analyzed all four of them, have lowered their estimates from report to report. We actually have a graph of that that shows how every report shows a lower est future estimate of sea level rise. Maybe they're learning something. However, Jim Hansen is not learning anything. His numbers have become weird. The last thing I've seen from him is uh, an email he sent to Globe and Mail in Toronto in which he predicts 25 meter rise by the year 2100. That's 82 feet, 82 feet sea level rise. If you work it out, that's nearly a foot a year. Nearly a foot a year. How does that compare with reality? Reality is about two millimeters a year, which is less than a tenth of an inch. You know, the, it just boggles the mind. Hans, sooner or later, people are going to clue into the fact that all of these gloom and doom scenarios are not coming true. The islands aren't going to sink. What's going to happen to this whole um, global warming scenario then, the hype then? Yeah, uh, well, of course, that's uh, difficult to say, but uh, <clears throat> I think that uh, the response of the climate alarmists might be that uh, global warming took a pause. I think that they will adjust their models and come up with alternative explanations why their earlier projections failed. And they will probably argue that the current cooling will only be temporary, but that it will come back with a vengeance in 10 years or so. But my bet will be that they will be proven wrong again. Uh, but believing them in the meantime is not without cost, because even at this moment, many governments are pursuing policies so-called to fight climate change, which have no detectable impact on worldwide temperatures, but require massive sacrifices from the population. In this context, it strikes me that recently the notion of energy poverty has emerged in the English language. Uh, England has had uh, considerable price rises of energy, and even more to come. And not only because of oil price rises, uh, but uh, also because of the fact that the government has used the fight against climate change as an alibi to raise all kinds of taxes on energy. And of course, uh, it is the citizen who has to foot the bill. Hans, what's your take on this? You know, I've, I've read a lot of information on the internet that uh, the planets in our immediate area, like Mars, Venus, Jupiter, are also heating up uh, to, you know, to a similar degree that Earth is. Could this all be caused by, uh, if there is a slight temperature increase, could the sun be behind it? Yes, well, uh, one thing is sure, there are no SUVs behind it. Thank you. And uh, the idea is indeed that uh, sun activity is responsible for uh, warming up. But the point, however, today is that the sun is extremely or extraordinarily quiet. Um, we are uh, counting uh, certain sun cycles and uh, we are expecting a new sun cycle, solar cycle number 24, but it isn't coming. Uh, and that's the reason why many scientists, not in the climatological field, but in the field of astrophysics, expect uh, a cooling for the years to come. Well, it seems that there has been some degree of cooling already. Um, there last, I think it was last winter in uh, um, Greece and Estonia, there were amazing cold snaps and many people lost their lives. Um, what do you expect over the next little while if the sun continues its low activity? Yeah, well, we should always be careful. We should not judge on, uh, on uh, uh, some temporary uh, phenomena. So we have to wait uh, in order to uh, establish a trend or not. But uh, indeed, uh, <clears throat> if you look at the development of temperatures over the last 10 years, we see that uh, the current temperatures are 0 0.8 degrees Celsius below the peak of 1998. 0 0.8 degrees Celsius. Now, we always hear complaints that uh, the Earth is warming and that we have a rise in temperatures over the last 150 years of 0 
seven uh, degrees Celsius. Right. So that is a very alarming story, which we always hear, but we never hear about the fall in temperatures over the last 10 years of 0 0.8 degrees Celsius. So they're just, I mean, it has to be showing up in the IPCC. Now you get, you get your hands on the information that comes through these reports. Do you see it actually in the reports? And why isn't it then disseminated to the public through, I guess it's through politicians that why originally get it. Why doesn't Al Gore read those reports? <laughs> yeah, well, the point is that uh, the report of the IPCC uh, uh, supplies uh, data uh, which are smooth. Uh, in the sense that uh, these are averages. Yes. So the latest data of the last decade is not clearly visible in uh, the IPCC report. And that's the uh, reason why people are not aware of it. Moreover, the spokespeople of the IPCC are not emphasizing any information which is at variance with the main message, scary message of the IPCC, that there is man-made global warming and that one should do something about it. That's right. You keep hearing that absolutely no doubt global warming is real. James Hansen, who's been mentioned, Barbara Boxer um, from California, and of course Al Gore, and all the political candidates running now, they're saying, oh, we got to do something. Right. You know, it's the politically correct thing to say. But there are plenty of skeptics out there. Is there any consensus among the skeptics about what we might really expect to happen over the next little while? Now, uh, the skeptics, uh, contrary to the climate alarmists uh, working together in the IPCC, the skeptics do not have a consensus culture. And that's, of course, quite normal in science uh, if you are dealing with things which are not completely understood. So there are various opinions among climate skeptics. But I think that there is one common denominator, and that is that mankind has no substantial impact on uh, climate. And that is a good thing for, for people to come away from this understanding is that even if every one of us stopped eating meat, stopped drinking milk, didn't drive our cars anymore, whatever happens on the planet is basically going to continue. Right. Is that right? Yeah, well, indeed, uh, as far as CO2 is concerned, the climate skeptics do not believe that CO2 uh, exercises a major impact on temperatures. And that means that there's little portion of CO2 which is produced by mankind, which is approximately 3 to 4 percent, uh, that, uh, that of course uh, has, has no impact whatsoever. Right. But of course we must be careful with the environment. There are many other things which we are uh, doing as mankind in the world and which will have an impact on the environment, uh, uh, a negative impact of the environment. It's better, if you think in terms of environmental policy, it's better to focus our efforts on other things than on CO2. Hans, we're going to take a short break here, but I just, a, just a question though, don't, don't plants thrive on CO2? Yes, that is true. Uh, and therefore, many uh, climate skeptics uh, uh, look at CO2 not as a pollutant, because it is no pollutant, because plants need it for uh, their growth, right. but as an elixir of life. You know, we're, we're Kate and I are from Southern California, and I always comment on this, that on the busiest freeways and highways on either side are beautiful blooming flowers in the midst of all those millions of cars going up and down every day. All right, our guest is Hans LeBaum. We'll be right back to wrap it up.